okay. Yeah. Hi, this is uh, part five of my play called uh, Jihad at Java Jills. And if you want to see part six, part seven, um, possibly see part six, part seven, uh, get a YouTube account and upload this video to YouTube. Call it Jihad at Java Jills part five. And that way if someone else has done what you've done, except if it's six or seven like that, you can see them. And in the process you can talk with them and uh, they've got the same videos that you have and then you, we can start flooding those videos that I think are excellent exposing Islam on the internet and let people know the errors that the Quran have uh, the errors of the Quran and Hadith and the threat that Islam poses and make people aware knowledge is power and maybe we can keep from um, having Islam take over where we're forced to pay the jizya tax Extortion tax is what it is under the threat of death. If we don't pay it according to Quran 9, 1 through 5, and 9, 29. So, if you don't have a YouTube account, then I'd suggest make one and then add this to it Jihad at Java Jills Part 5. Okay. To cause a collaboration effect. All right, I'll begin Part 5 here. Okay. After hiding guns in what he felt was a place in the house no one would find them, should they break in, Brian's, Brian had a for sale sign. He had, had a for sale sign up. I should put up here, yeah. His plan was to sell the family house for half price, including all the furniture, books, and belongings, not even taking the family albums, realizing that they were all going to end up in a landfill whether he took them with him or not. As he put the albums in the crawl space of his old family home, he went through all his old videotapes, mostly of him, uh, all his old videotapes, mostly of him reading his books and diaries. He realized that he looked pretty good. He looked pretty good looking uh, when he was in his 20s, yet he also remembered seeing some videos of his younger self picking his nose on camera and, well, licking, licking the snot off his fingers. Uh, licking the snot off his finger. Brian tried to remember that scene the most, uh, tried to remember that scene most of the time, so he wouldn't mind the fact that they were all going to be landfill, landfill bound. Then, in one box of tapes, Brian came upon, a, came upon a video that said, My Dad's 50th. Brian didn't have to play it, for he had seen it a few times before when all his close relatives in it were still alive, young, and healthy. Even the cowboy was in a scene or two, never looking better. Brian felt he, if he played it now, he'd uh, burst out into violent sobbing, so instead of playing it, he put it in the VCR for anyone who might want to see it, as doubtful as that might be. On the tape was his granny reading her poems. One of them was one of one of them was her reading the poem. I said a little prayer for you today. I said a little prayer for you today. Such a poem was later claimed a authorship by several people. At the time, Brian thought for sure that his granny had written that poem, and that it got that and that got picked up when she sent it in to a poetry publishing company that published unknown amateur poets like his granny, thus making it so someone could steal such a poem and claim it as their own. As the years went by, a man named, uh, a man with the last name of Zamboni, the creator of the ice skating rink cleaners, was the one whose name came up the most in authorship for the, such a poem. Zamboni being the first, be, Zamboni being the true author increased further when Brian later found a book of poetry he, he, he had made for his granny years ago that contained all the poems Brian believed she had composed. Only I said a little prayer for you today was literally cut out of the book, possibly by his granny. Still, since he believed she wrote it at a certain time, Brian remembered a very low time in his life when he was trying to get a, his Class A license to become a long-distance trucker and happened to come upon that poem in plaque form inside his trucking teacher's office cubicle. That's my granny's poem. 
he told his teacher, pointing at it with tears in his eyes. The poem was given to his teacher as a gift from someone. You're a liar, said his teacher with a serious look in his face, a serious look in his eyes. Being that he later discovered that his granny possibly cut out the poem from the book he made for her, he felt that, in a way, his teacher just might be right in calling him a liar. Still, though, for Mr. Richardson, seeing such a poem on the wall, he took to be his granny's at that time was to him as if his granny came back from the spirit world to comfort him and shine a little light in the darkness that maybe possibly there aren't any country there aren't any coincidences in that there is an ultimate plan for us all however bleak it might appear while we are alive what time is this here okay i've got uh, six minutes left all right Brian Richardson took off to Berkeley to die in a nice place looking out over the bay. Will wonders ever cease, he asked himself, getting lucky with renting a small million-dollar home with a nice view. The only thing he took with him were five laptops, a, a camera, and the DVDs. He changed his mind about only taking those when he thought of adding something later to his lifelink account, making him go back for a, la for a family album and video of himself with the cowboy in happier days. He decided that in his last remaining weeks of living, he would write a science fiction novel that would expose Islam. Brian noticed that on his Aloha snack bar DVDs and CDs, that whether they were CD or DVD, they all had blank spaces on the edges of them, allowing him to add more video to the D to the DVD version, DVD versions and writings to the CD versions. With such a case, he would have his DVDs having different parts of his novel read onto them in video form, and different parts of his novel in uh, in computer print burned onto the data deficient CDs. Since he had so many DVDs and so many DVDs and CDs, he felt. He could make five exact copies, each containing the exact same video of him reading his novel, and he could make 20 CDs of the exact same thing since he would have more of his novel revealed on CD. Those who wanted to learn about his novel more would have to find those on the internet who picked up a CD or has picked up a CD, not a DVD. Brian wanted 10 to 12 minutes of him reading his novel in video on the DVD, since such a time length was easy for someone to upload to YouTube-like sites later, should they choose to do so. Since Brian felt that the novel was very revealing about him and very embarrassing, due to the sexual nature of the novel, Brian decided that uh, this would be the one novel he would never publish unedited. It it could only be published in whole if those who picked up the up CD up CDs and DVDs were not only many but willing to willing and able to upload them to the internet and publish it themselves. And if they did that, they could upload videos of Christian Prince, David Wood, and more of his fellow cyber crusaders who he thought were excellent at exposing Islam, helping to bring it down before America went the way of Europe. Since it's a notebook data format, they can easily rewrite and change the novel to their own liking, improve it, and, and make it their own, thought Brian. I don't care if they make a fantastic Hollywood movie out of it, turning, it, turning them into millionaires, or, or send it to Japan and turn it into another Ghost in the Shell, or a box full of fireflies, or whatever it was called. As long as they show how badly the Quran and Muhammad blow it in their version of my novel, they plagiarize Hey. That's all I care about. Oh, hey, I've got um, three, uh, two and a half minutes to go. Okay. Brian watched the sun setting over the mountain near the Golden Gate Bridge from the deck of his house. It was near the completely. It was a, a near complete replay. A, a, a near complete replay, as he remembered it from near the precise same position when he and his parents visited friends in the Berkeley Hills when he was a toddler. 
Possibly only two years old at the time, he remembered feeling sad watching the sun go down due to the way the grown-ups were remarking about its setting. As the sun set now, Brian felt that if the novel failed to generate interest in finding out what happens to the lead character of the story, so be it, he thought. It's win-win for me anyway. A bright side to a bad side and vice versa. If I bring down Islam with it, fantastic. If it's solely ignored, like I'm expecting, well, at least the novel won't embarrass me. It'll be safely in the trash, protecting whatever perception people still have of me. <coughs> Brian viewed the novel as his one last ditch effort to create curiosity. Brian viewed the novel as his one last dish, ditch effort to create curiosity and a need to learn about what happens in the novel. In the process, Brian felt he could create sleeper cells when he'd later pull off something to generate a lot of news and activate them, making it possible for those who would have the data disks in their possession to upload the videos of his fellow cyber crusaders when they'd type into their web browser yet again Project Independence Day or Messages from the Edge of Earth. Well, you don't have to do that because it won't make sense because you can't put Project Independence Day or those are messages from the Edge of Earth in the tags. Instead, put, uh, since you this is part five, put uh, Jihad at Java Jill's part five in your, uh, yeah, uh, you could put it in, in for, uh, to maybe find others after they've done it. No, 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 no. Put it, um, uh, jihad, uh, jihad at Java Jill's part five, and then that could get the ball going for those who've done the same by putting um, this kind of this kind of video on their YouTube account. So, let's see how much time do I have left here? Oh, I gotta stop it here.